Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Cadence with Hanny Elhack, who's going to talk today about analog circuit simulation. So Hanny, as we get down into the most advanced nodes, 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers, even 3 nanometers, analog circuit simulation becomes much more difficult. What, what can go wrong here? A lot of things can go wrong with analog when it comes to advanced nodes. Advanced nodes are designed to make circuit, uh, digital circuits faster, uh, consume lower power, but usually analog comes as an afterthought. Analog requires a lot of flexibility, and uh, this flexibility means you can change the size and dimensions of transistors. What happens in advanced nodes, usually you have these fixed size, FinFET transistors, and you have to have more of those. So in advanced nodes, we end up with a lot more transistors to perform the same kind of function that was done by fewer transistors in, uh, in mature nodes. And one of the things that analog designers have done over the years, just in order to get the, these circuits to scale, is they've put more digital circuitry and less analog. But that analog is still a problem, right? Yes. So actually, putting more digital circuitry in, uh, in analog functions is also another problem for circuit simulators. So these, uh, these digital circuits are used to uh, do different things, like for example to calibrate for process variation. So actually that's another important point, that process variation in advanced node is, is much wider than in mature nodes. So one of the techniques, as you mentioned, is using digital circuits to calibrate the analog circuits for this or using digital circuits to control the analog circuits. Now, that also makes analog circuits much bigger than before and more challenging for the circuit simulator to handle. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So, Hani, what are we looking at here? So, there are two forces that challenge the circuit simulator today. First, there is the process node complexity. And there are many different factors that come with process nodes. First, as we discussed, there is the FinFET stacking. The need to use more transistors to perform the same function one transistor that is more flexible in mature nodes could have done. And this means that you have bigger matrices for the analog simulator to handle. The second problem is the parasitics. And, and FinFET devices come with a lot of device parasitics that increase the size of, uh, of the analog circuits. And uh, the problem really is not just the, the number of parasitics in the design, it's also the magnitude of these parasitics. In advanced nodes, the, the magnitude of parasitics is comparable to design parameters. And this means that it's not accurate to run simulations without these parasitics. So this gets a lot more complicated as we get down into the, the most advanced nodes, because in the past you could basically create your analog circuitry and then add it in later on, right? Now you have to almost do this as part of the, the entire design uh, process of the chip. Exactly. So in the past, I would say most of the analog design was done before the layout. Then uh, after the layout, you extract the parasitic, and then it becomes more of a sign-off phase. Today, the, because the parasitics are within the same order of magnitude as the design parameters itself, pre-layout simulations are no longer accurate. And we find more and more analog designers running, you know, doing the layout and running more simulations and changing the layout. So most of the simulations today are post-layout simulations with tons of parasitics, making analog simulation much slower. It's hard enough to change a digital circuit. It's almost impossible to change an analog circuit after it's been designed, right? It's very hard, yes, especially with all the constraints that are coming with advanced nodes. What happens as we get into gate all around? What does that do to the picture? So, of course, it solves all kinds of problems that uh, comes with FinFET when it comes to design. But when it comes to simulation, it means that, uh, you know, we have more complex models to deal with and we have more parasitics to deal with. So analog, whatever, whatever makes the design better usually makes circuit simulation harder. Is the parasitic stack actually growing or is it just that you have to do more checks for the parasitics themselves? 
So uh, there are two factors actually. So one, first, parasitics are growing, and uh, with uh, you know with all these three D kind of structures, you have more places for you know inductance and resistance to impact your design. But also that because these parasitics today are first they are big and they are comparable to other parameters in the design, you need to take them into account more than the less impactful parasitics in mature nodes. What's also become problematic is uh, process variation, particularly as you start moving down node after node. How does that affect the analog circuits? So analog circuits, even more than digital, they are very sensitive to process variation. And uh, yeah, process variation is uh, the third component in the process node complexity here. And process variation calls for more analog simulations to run. And that's a bigger constraint on the analog simulator. You need, and especially, there are lots of uh, less accurate simulators that do certain levels of compaction. When you do that, you know, you can you know, you will not get accurate results if you start changing the very small parameters involved in process variation. So it basically, it adds more requirement on analog accuracy. So what happens on the analog design side? How does that change as you move down into these advanced nodes? So first, these factors change the way analog designers do their designs. So analog designers now tend to use more digital circuits in their analog. They use digital circuits to calibrate, for example, for process variation. They use digital circuits to control uh, the analog designs. They would replace parts of the analog circuits with digital. And of course, the more digital circuits you have in your design, uh, the, the size of the design increases and uh, uh, the speed, uh, the rate of the simulation will increase, making simulation even more complex. Analog circuits are large. How do you go about simulating? Yeah, so analog circuits are large and they're getting larger because of all these uh, process node complexity, because of the digital calibration, digital control, the multiple modes, multiple standards. So typically most commercial simulators today cannot handle the size and complexity of analog circuits. And we find analog designers either going to FastPice and sacrificing accuracy, or uh, trying to use methodologies with behavioral models, which is something we strongly encourage, of course, but at the end, there will be situations where you need to simulate the whole thing at the transistor level. Or, and this happens really in many cases, that tape out comes and the analog simulation is still running and you're hoping for the best. And so how do you close that up? What do you do when, you, when this circuit is so large that you can't fit it on a simulator? So in Cadence, uh, we are trying to solve this problem today by introducing new technologies in circuit simulation. So just like analog simulation is getting more complex and advanced nodes and, and manufacturing processes getting complex, mathematics also has improved a lot in, in the past uh, 20 years. And the way circuit simulators today solve matrices can be done a lot more efficiently than before. And so what you're trying to do now is keep up with the complexity that's going on in the, the simulation, but at the same time you're doing that with uh, just more powerful hardware, better uh, algorithms that you're being able to use because we're now much more advanced in algorithms than we were even two years ago, right? Exactly. And in addition to that, we also deal with these issues with advanced nodes, like uh, the parasitics and, and the types of the models itself, uh, by introducing advanced modeling techniques for device models and for parasitics that can still solve these uh, complex uh, uh, topologies, but with uh, analog accuracy. As you start scaling, you start adding in more CPUs. What happens with the analog simulation then? Yeah, so uh, analog simulation is, uh, is very sensitive to communication between different CPUs. So the more CPUs you add, the communication between these CPUs become more intensive, 
slowing down the simulation and posing a limit on how many CPUs you can use. Yes. We have introduced a new distribution method that is lightweight and minimizes this communication between the CPUs. So today, we can go to 164 CPUs or 128 CPUs for the same simulation run with, uh, with good scaling. So this, there's another option to, to just scaling on a single die, which is that, that more chips can be put into a package. You can t take the analog portion and potentially move it off die into a package. Mm -hmm. What does that do for the simulation? Yeah. So you need a powerful simulator that can handle uh, new types of parasitics like inductance and, and mutual inductance. And not just that, most of these parameters get extracted as S parameters, which uh, usually slows down most commercial simulators. So the ability to handle S parameters that are coming from electromagnetic solvers that are designed to handle, you know, interconnects on a silicon interposer or a bond wire uh, becomes very critical in this situation. Hanny Elhak, thanks for a great explanation. You're welcome. Thank you, Ed.